What is Stoicism? It seems to be gathering a rather large online following of late. Stoicism was developed many years ago in ancient Greece as a way to overcome destructive emotions by practicing self-control and developing one's fortitude. We can't control nor rely on external events, no more than we can control the direction of the wind or the weather. So what's the point of getting upset when these things don't go our way? Instead, a Stoic focuses on controlling their own mind and emotions, and choosing behaviour that benefits themselves as well as helping others. Willpower and Stoicism go hand in hand. If you can improve your willpower, you'll be a better Stoic. And as you practice Stoicism, your willpower will consequently improve. I know, we are caught in a world where instant gratification is the norm. We can flick on the computer or pick up a tablet and watch any video or play any game we like, immediately. We can order almost any food over the internet and have it arrive at our door within 15 or 20 minutes. Online, we can pretty much purchase anything in the world, cheaply and quickly. We guts down high-calorie, low-nutrient food because it's there, it's available and tastes nice. Instant gratification is the enemy of Stoicism. Or is it? Most Stoics probably savour the chance of being tempted, because by being tempted, one can practice Stoicism. The other day, I was at my friend's house playing a board game. One of my mates pulled out a packet of chocolate biscuits, mint slice I believe, my favourite kind, and plonked them down in the centre of the table. Everyone started gutsing into them as I watched on. I could smell the flavour of the creamy mint insides wafting throughout the room. I could see the melted chocolate all over my friend's fingertips as they started licking it off as if it was the last chocolate they'd ever be tasting. But then I realised, I don't need to have any. Despite my belly saying, eat up, I decided to practice stoicism and ignore those creamy, chocolatey treats. I ended up sitting there for a bit over three hours while there were still biscuits on the table. The other guys were clearly stuffed. There was chocolate all over their mouths and under their fingernails. They were resting their heads to the side and reclining back in their chairs, clearly satisfied with their indulgence. In the end, there are only two biscuits left, but I just made the decision not to eat any. I actually felt powerful. Nothing was going to make me eat those biscuits. And that's the first way of practicing Stoicism. Be strong in the face of temptation. If you are in a situation where normally you would cave, just test yourself and see how far you can go. It's actually quite liberating. To add to that, make sure to empathise with your future self. If you like alcohol, or at least enjoy its effects, but you hate the feeling of a hangover and the toll on your health and well-being, then make the promise to not put yourself in that situation. It's just not worth it. I often find that if I know I can't resist a temptation, then I try to avoid it completely. For example, if you have a gambling problem, then sometimes the best course of action is just to not go anywhere that offers gambling. I know, it's hard nowadays as almost every pub and club has a gaming licence. There was a time when I quite enjoyed playing the pokies, that is, poker machines for those non-Australian listeners, but in doing so, I lost quite a lot of money. I would go out and earn $50 washing cars in the midday sun, and then stick it all down a poker machine that evening. What a waste! Maybe every time you have the urge to gamble, go and run around the park instead, or do some push-ups. At the very least, you're turning a negative thought into a positive outcome. The more you think of gambling, the more you exercise. Either you're going to become super fit and enjoy its benefits, or you'll soon become exhausted and give up thinking about gambling all the time. Another way to improve your willpower is to not procrastinate. Do important things immediately. Many of us succumb to procrastination, but in the end, we just feel bad because of it. If you hold off doing your university assignment until the last moment, then you're willfully setting yourself up to fail. This will ultimately hurt you in the end, so why not do yourself the courtesy of getting things done early? Instead of leaving the dishes pile up and pile up day after day, why not clean up after every meal? Instead of delaying your exercise program till next week, why not start today? The only time we have in this world is the present, so why delay something beneficial for a future that may never come? Another thing you should do when practicing Stoicism is to use your innate judgement. If you put yourself in a situation and something feels wrong, then it probably is. Just say you're at the pub with your mates. You know you should be heading home soon to play with your son, as you promised him, but instead you continue on drinking. 
Well, not only is that hurting you, that's hurting your son. So listen to your feelings. Don't go against your better judgment. I think we all rationally know when we are doing something we shouldn't be, or when we should be doing something that we're not. If you think that you are watching too much TV, or eating too much, or not spending enough time with your family, then you are probably right. By practicing Stoicism, one learns to act on these feelings and do the right thing. We all know if we are too fat, or unfit, or a bad husband, so why not do something about it today? This leads us to the four cardinal virtues of Stoicism – wisdom, courage, justice, and temperance. You need wisdom in order to recognize the right course of action. If one of your customers is upset and starts yelling at you, maybe the best course of action is to practice patience and empathy. Courage is required in order to not back down in the face of adversity. You could cower and run away, or you can stand strong and listen to the man's concerns. It could be that the man has some valid complaints, so justice must be practiced. If the vending machine took his money for the third time this morning, it would be your duty to make sure the man is reimbursed and the machine fixed. Temperance is self-control. It might be easy to yell at the man and tell him to go elsewhere, but that is not the actions of a Stoic. You must deal with the situation at hand, not try to fight it. Stoicism requires you to focus on things that are inside your control. Yelling at a bus driver for being late is not going to make the bus arrive any earlier, either now or in the future. So why anger yourself and the bus driver for something that is outside your and probably the bus driver's control? If you've planned a party and it rains, despite the weather report predicting otherwise, it won't help the situation by abusing the Bureau of Meteorology. As a Stoic, you must practice self-constraint. Losing control in the moment is not something to be proud of. However, it is human, so forgive yourself when it does happen. Apologize to those around you if it has made them feel uncomfortable. Learn to admit your wrongdoing. The Stoic will always try to do the right thing. When something is outside your control, you must learn to accept it. The Stoic knows that worrying or complaining about something beyond their control is a waste of time. It achieves nothing but hardship for the complainer and the complainee. This takes a lot of practice. We've been brought into a world where complaining about everything is commonplace. We're taught to stand up when we see injustice. Good advice, however, a plane being late due to bad weather is not a valid injustice. You must be strong. Realize that only some things are in your power. The rest you must take as it happens. To stay ready and alert, Stoics will often practice misfortune. They will voluntarily put themselves in bad situations in order to never fear it. Some rich executives will wear old clothes, drink instant coffee, and eat two-minute noodles for a week just to prove to themselves that they should not fear poverty. Samurais in Japan would meditate on their own death, knowing if ever that time came, they would never fear it. As a Stoic, it's good practice to visualize the negative. If you have a big meeting tomorrow where you must give an important speech, imagine that everyone disagrees with you or starts laughing at you. Visualize how you would react in such a situation with a cool and calm head. Plans often go wrong, so to expect everything to go right all the time is a fool's errand. A Stoic must always be prepared for disruption in their plan. I used to get upset when I went to work and students would not show up, or call in sick at the last moment. I used to get angry and walk back home in frustration, but now I realize that that achieved nothing. I can't change how the students behave. I can only change my reaction to it. If for whatever reason students cancel and interrupt my day, I focus on more positive outcomes such as I had the chance to have a nice walk to work. I can use the university's Wi-Fi to catch up on some research or writing. There's a crossover with this way of thinking and Buddhism. That is, desire leads to suffering. If you always expect things to pan out a certain way, you'll be forever disappointed. It's better to immunize yourself against potential misfortune than to never expect it. Things go wrong all the time. Plans are interrupted. People behave erratically. Expect the worst and you'll never be disappointed. Anything else that happens will be a bonus. I'm not suggesting that you mope around all the time being a grumbling Joe, but certainly you must keep in the back of your mind that things won't always go as planned, so you must prepare for it. Stoics also keep things in perspective. 
Remember, in the grand scheme of things, you are but a speck in this universe, just a tiny little blip in the cosmos. Whether or not the waiter did his job properly or not, does it really matter in the end? If he brought me the egg salad, but I ordered the green salad, does it really matter? If you don't eat eggs, well, just get him to correct the order. If you don't mind eggs, well, just enjoy the surprise. There's no need to be upset and angry. And lastly, a Stoic always reminds themselves of their own mortality. If you know that you will die one day, then you know that time is precious. You could spend your days whiling away in front of the computer or smartphone, or you can get out in the world and experience life. Don't waste a second. Ultimately, you have choices in life. You could stuff your face full of hot dogs and donuts all day long, sitting in front of the idiot box slurping down litres of cola each day, or you can go outside, walk to work, eat healthily and drink water instead. You could go around getting into arguments with people all the time, blaming them for your misfortune, or you can treat people nicely, empathise with them, talk with them, sort out any differences. If people aren't willing to talk, you can always walk away. There's nothing wrong with a warrior backing down. If somebody is in your face looking for a fight, and the only thing that you'll lose by backing down is your pride, well, so be it. That's a far better option than potentially getting your teeth smashed in, or getting stabbed, or whatever. Avoiding confrontation is smart. People who resort to fighting probably haven't got the wisdom to figure out an alternate course of action. Don't play their macho games. Avoiding violence is what true warriors do. They fight only when there is no other option. So anyway, that's my basic understanding of Stoicism. I'm far from an expert, and obviously I have a lot to learn. I'm not claiming that I know it all, but certainly I can understand the benefits of practicing self-control. You should focus on the four cardinal virtues – wisdom, courage, justice, and temperance. Listen to your inner voice. In most daily situations, we generally know what is right and what is wrong. We know when we should be studying instead of playing games. We know when we should be exercising instead of wolfing down ice cream. Stoicism is a way of life. It is something that you must practice daily. It's a way to help you keep calm in an unpredictable, chaotic world. Practice self-control. Put down the hamburger. Put down the soft drink. Put down the cigarettes. And get out there and release your inner stoic. Go on, what are you waiting for?